you're getting yourself out there. And I've just kind of learned my advice for people listening to um, to want to get out there, want to put stuff out there, great content, thoughts that are on their mind that are really inspiring that just don't. My, my advice to them is like, it, it might be embarrassing at first to do that, but redefine what embarrassing is. And my redefining moment to what embarrassing was, is I played football in college at BYU and then I played in the NFL for a couple of years and I was cut four different times. And when yeah. you're cut from a, a, a team in the NFL, it's not like nobody hears about it, right? Millions of people hear, hear about that, right? When you get cut from a team, you, millions of people hear about it every single time. And so I, I just kind of become immune to like backlash. I've, be, I've become immune to even caring what like the outside might think. If I know I have something yeah. powerful to say, then I'm going to say it. I, I have to say it. And so I, I can, on a mass scale, influence and, and help people. And I, I've... I, I feel like I've influenced way more people by not even being a football player anymore, by, by doing what I do on social media with my businesses. And, uh, and it's a beautiful thing. And so embarrassment and, and feeling uncomfortable, even if you're like you said, you're an operator, it, it's just yeah. part of it. And, but you have so many good things to say that it, it's just, you have to go through that fine and, you know, I'll do it. But at the same time, it's so necessary as well. Yeah. And I think, I think there's actually a really good, like one of my, one of my good friends, Evan Carmichael's the man dude. And, uh, Evan has got so many followers on YouTube, but he calls himself an introvert. He's got a book out, you know, called Built to Serve, and, and I, I love it. Um, you, need to, you need to understand, like, there's a massive difference between, one, just sharing your message, being an influencer, and then being an expert. Because, yeah. I mean, being an influencer is amazing, but when you're an expert, like, other people will pay you for your knowledge. So it depends on what your strategy is. You may just want to get good news out there and you may just want to share stuff. That's awesome. Sure. But you may want to turn it into a massive business where you've got companies like Target with Rachel Hollis. He's paying her to develop product and doing things there. Um, like I think about like Joe Rogan has got a whole, you know, alpha brain or whatever is exploding because he has a massive influence. He can plug anything into it right then. Right. You know, so if whatever you do, I just you have to be one of one of our things in high performance um, Institute is seek clarity. You just have to be clear about it. Um, you have to be clear about your message and you have to be clear about your brand and you have to be clear about what it is you're trying to do. That's how you grow your following and that's how you grow your influence. And, and that's how you become an expert. If you don't know what you're doing and you're not clear on it, you don't have a real strategy around it. then that's fine, too. But it's like. What do you want to do? Yeah, I believe that. You know, I, I think a lot of people, uh, they want to be an influencer before they want to be an expert. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that sometimes can be negative. It's great to just retweet stuff and put out good content. That's always great. It's uplifting. Yeah. For, you know, 90% of the news we hear is negative. So it's good to have you know, that, that, that uh, alternate force of good that comes out there. But I think people put, you know, the, the cart before the horse and they, they, they try to be the expert before they are. And, and, uh, uh, it can get away, get in the way of the actual expert, you know? And so uh, the way I try to influence it is not by acting like a know-it-all, but really knowing what I know and, and preaching that. Cause all I know is my story and stories yeah. sell. So all I know is what I've gone through and I'll share that cause I'm an expert of my story. No one knows it better than me. Yeah. And it's helped me become who I've become. And so really it's just sharing my story that that's, that's really, really what I've, what I've done. Uh, having spent time with those guys out there in Puerto Rico, what are some of your top learning points from, from those people? Um, for me, it's, for me, I mean, some of my, some of my takeaways, not, not just from that is that they, there's some really, really great people and super wicked smart. Um, and I'm like, I'm like a sponge, but, I think that you never need, you don't, don't ever be afraid to ask, you know? Um, and when, when you get, when you get invited to something, you know, don't, don't wait for people to invite you, you know, make a seat at the table. Um, I think also the, the big thing is, is that you need to learn how to give to give. And, you know, I think a big reason what has driven my success is really do as much as you can for as many people as you can as often as you can without expecting anything in return. And I think everybody- How do you do that? Not to, cut, not to cut you off, but how do you do that? Because it's so easy, it's, it's a lot easier said than done, of course, everything is, but how do you do that specifically? What do you do to, to make that happen? Well, don't, don't, don't expect anything back. Don't make it transactional. Most people give to get, 
which is good. I mean, which I did for a lot of my life. And then, then something switched when I met, you know, a good friend of mine, Harvey McKay. I've been on his advisory board for a long time and Brandon Steiner at Steiner Sports in New York. And he's the one that, that shared that with me. And, you know, it gets to a point where you, if you can just serve as much as you can serve and do, do great things for people and find out what their need is, if you can solve their need and then don't expect anything before and then you do it again, they're like, dude, this guy's amazing. Are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, he doesn't, like, and then all of a sudden it's like, dude, what can I do for you? It, it really works. It's the long game. It's not a short transactional game, but sure. it's, a, it's a long game. And I think that once I figured that out, then everything just started to fall into place, Mitch. Yeah, I believe that, man. It, I mean, it manifested with, with you know, the people you're surrounding yourself by. And I want to touch on that point um, with the make your own seat at a table. This is a funny story. I think, I think you'll like this. Um, so I don't even know if we had connected on social media yet, but three months ago, I went to Poland uh, yeah. with Lewis Howes, with Wim Hof, Aubrey Marcus, Matthew Hussey, Jesse. So a bunch of amazing guys. I'm not going to you were You were there out there with my buddy Steve Weatherford and Jesse. Steve, yeah. One, yeah. And so the crew. Last week. Yes, yeah. the whole crew. It was, it was seriously amazing. It was very similar to what you did in Puerto Rico, except a lot colder, 100%. Yeah. It was, uh, we were in ice the entire time. And so... Uh, that's why if you see me in ice pass, don't be surprised. I, I, was... I would have been like a big sea lion out there with you, coach. <laughs> hey, it would have been. Hey, it would have been amazing, man. We'll have to get you out there. But yeah. what? What to make? You know, back to your point of making your own seat at the table. I, I actually had uh, lunch with Lewis House about a year and a half ago, down in California. We just connected on social media. We had a very similar story with you know uh, sports and, and injury and all these other things. And we just connected and we were down in, uh, having lunch in California together after we did a little football workout. And uh, he was telling me about this Wim Hof experience that was going to happen in nine months, which was you know, three months ago. And, uh, and, uh, he started talking about it. And then I was like, I flat out said, I was before he even asked, I said, I'm in, I'm, I'm going, let's do it, man. I'm in. And he's like, wait, you're, you're in. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm in. I'm, I'm there. I'm going. I pulled out my own chair Cut my own, cut my own dinner, made my own dinner. As a matter of fact, set my plate, put my own napkin down, and I, I made a seat at the table. And it, it just ended up being amazing. And when I was there, I, I tried to as much as possible just serve and provide value for these guys. And um, and they've done. I think I was the youngest guy there, and, and all these guys have done such amazing things and amazing podcasts and amazing businesses and uh, all the things that you can imagine these guys have done. And so it was really cool to be down there and serve and what I realized is, is that wasn't just a one-time transactional thing where we just mm -hmm. got a bunch of pictures and left. It was, you know, now we get together every single month on, on, on zoom and, and we talk about what we're doing now to better ourselves. And so you're right. You got to make your own seat at the table. But when, when you do serve the person next to you, you, you know, yeah. give them some of your food and, and wh whatever it takes to serve them and be good to them. And we've exchanged gifts. We've, we've, uh, we, we share uplifting stories, especially at this time now, and it's just really fun to, to serve people. And you get to know people on a whole different level when your mindset is, I'm not there for the picture, but I'm there for uh, that, you know, that picture-perfect moment with them instead. Well, I, and I think, I think, Mitch, you're a lot like me. It's like, you know, how can I – honestly, like, service brings me the most joy. Like, if I can help another human uh, to do more, to be more, to become more, that's what actually – I found that that's what brings me the most joy – and I know you're a lot like that, dude. You're a super fun guy. You've got tons of great energy. You got a ton of love in your heart. You've been through some crazy stuff in your life. You know, losing your mom to stuff with football and everything else. Like, I mean, you're just an amazing human. And so, like, you do have a servant heart. And, and people know that when you're around them. And I think, I think, you know, people then learn how to treat you and they learn how you're going to show up in their life as well. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Yeah, it, it's... I have a story that uh, is, is really unique, you know, and so I, I try to share it as much as possible. And it's crazy when you start sharing that story and everyone has their own story that will inspire somebody else. Um, I, I started looking at story. Uh, Humble the Poet uh, was out there in Poland as well. And I was with him last week. He said, when people start looking at their story as more of a duty to share, we will have a, a a way more inspired world to live in because every single person on this planet has a story of some sort of trial and triumph moment that you, you, everyone does. I've had on a bigger scale where everyone knew about my trials, you know? And so uh, that, that was more fun, but it's, it, I've looked at it as a legit duty to uh, bless people who have gone through something similar. And, and, and it feels so much, it feels great to do. It feels great to do. And that's why I, I feel a duty to, to share it on social media and be, and be active and, 
and, and hopefully that bleeds out to my employees and my business. And uh, yeah, and so thank you for that. I, I, uh, I, 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 I don't even know if I 100% agree with what you, your compliment, but I, I, I appreciate that, man, seriously. And I think it oozes out, you know, from, from the messages you share as well, man. You, when I would see you with those guys and the things you were doing, it was like, I, I know that guy is there for not a look at me moment, but he's there to provide value. And I think every single one of those guys is probably obsessed with what you, what you provide. Now, how, how do you think, cause so many people, what I got asked was, how did you, how did you make on that trip? How are you, how are you out with Steve? Like, what do you, you know, you just got in the business role, but now you're with a bunch of business people. How, how did you make this happen? I, a lot of it I think was from football and all these other connections I made, but in your, in your circumstance, like, for all people that want to be surrounded by high performing people, um, how does one make the first step in making that happen? Again, I think that, I think it comes back to um, learning what somebody's needs are and helping them solve a the problem. You know, um, the first company that I built, I mean, we were one of the first companies doing online coaching and, and personal development. So, I've kind of been the godfather in a lot of this, this industry. We had, you know, close to 700 employees and we're just doing tons of stuff like in the personal development, the fate uh, space. And so we figured out how to really grow companies and businesses and, and strategy. And so I think if you can find out, if you can find a need and help somebody really solve it. And, and I hate it when people say like, man, how can I help you? And then they say, Hey, you could do this for me. Then go do it. Then go figure <laughs> out how to do yeah. it. You know, some of that is just, I, you know, so much of it's just lip service. And, you know, it's like really show up for somebody in their life. And I will tell you, no matter how successful people are or no matter how successful you think they are, they all want to grow. They're, they're amazing, amazing people out there. And that group of people specifically are all have servant hearts. And so I think you also find your tribe. Mm. I think you also will find out, I think we speak in vibration and I think we act in vibration. And I think people can see that whether it's on our Instagram feeds or whatever. I think that when we feel that we're like, dude, I totally get these people and they're, they totally get around me. I don't attract the same audiences as, as maybe somebody else, you know, but I may intersect that. But I think, I think you get invited to, you start to get invited to where you're leveling up to and where you're going. And so I think, I think, listen to that. I think the other thing that's important, I think it's important like to have a really good business strategy, but I think it's really important to have a human strategy. Who are the top mm. five, who are the top five people in your life right now, Mitch, that you want to get to know? Put a strategy behind that and be like, in the next six months, I'm gonna meet them, I'm gonna do this. And really put a strategy behind that. Mm. Don't wait for that to happen. Put a strategy, a human strategy, a capital, the human capital strategy around who you want to show up in your life and write it down and figure out a game plan to get there. Do research yeah. on them. Find out what they like. They, they love Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to send them a signed helmet from, you know, from Carter or whatever it may be, you know, or to their yeah. son. But start to make a game plan about those five people you want to meet and then figure out how to do it. Don't wait That's for it to great. happen. That's great, man. I, I think the art. I didn't mean to cut you off, but the art of just writing it down will say, wait a minute, I actually mean that. It wasn't a thought as I'm just getting tired. It was, I actually mean that because I'm writing it down. I have a note of people. I actually have in my note, notes on my yeah. phone, uh, a list of people that I want to meet. And, and it seems like they just come up because when you write something down, your mind knows that you wrote it down. It doesn't forget. Yeah. And so it's constantly new ways to connect and serve. And uh, one thing I, that, that I like what you said, and this is what Jesse Isler, who I'm sure you know, of said, he said, uh, when, when, when one of your friends goes through something, and this is what happened to me. This is a personal story. My mom passed away right when I was with my first team in the NFL and, and when I was just graduating college. Uh, I got so many texts that said, hey, Mitch, sorry for, for what happened. Uh, let me know if I can help. And I'm like, brother, I'm not going to text you. We haven't talked in a year and, and ask you for help. Like, this is, you're the 496 text that I've gotten. That let me help. The, and Jesse Isso taught me, the, the ones that actually mean it just show up un, uninvited. Totally. No joke. They legit they'll show up. show up. They'll bring you something. They'll come take you for a ride. They'll know what you need. Those are real friends, bro. I'm like, who are the five people in your life that you could call at three o'clock in the morning? Because I know I could call those guys. And I, who, who is it that you could call in a crisis? 
Like yeah. who, who do you who do you not just snorkel with, but who can you scuba dive with with friends? They're the ones that don't just text you and say like, hey, just thinking of you, bro. They're the ones that actually are there freaking holding your freaking hand during a crisis. Yeah. That's, but you need to be that kind of friend for others that, that you want to want to really get to know. Yeah. I think it, it's all reciprocal. I think it only happens to you if you're, if you're the one that is willing to do it for others. And, and this, just talking about this, this isn't me saying I'm a master of this. It's me saying yeah. that this is just a way of it and we can all improve on every single bit of this. And it's not just gift giving. It's not present giving. It's not the nicest gold watch that shows up on their doors type of service. It's just actually, when they post something, read their content and, and understand what they're going through. Because it's probably something that it's not just a double tap and a comment. And it's, it's a read what they're actually going through. See it out and find a time that where your stories match. And then say, I have an opportunity to bring something up. That's what happened to Lewis Howes and I. Is we had such a crazy similar story. And I only knew that because I had followed him and respected him that we both went through ups and downs with football, with injury, and his dad went through a, a, a near fatal accident that, that ch and altered his dad's life forever. My mom passed away. We were the exact same age. We have similar values and goals. And I was like, I got to meet this person because I haven't met anyone that has a story that's as similar as ours. And we were able to, to work out together, and, and, and now we're good buddies. And, and, uh, and it's, can you it's take him? So much more. Can, you, can you take Lewis? What's that? Can you take him? <laughs> in football and we're yeah. in the same position so there's never a time where i don't think we're going head to head but i will say <laughs> i was i've only been like three years remiss from football i think he's like 10 so maybe speed i got him i think but uh lewis is a strong cat and he, he broke a lot of records in college so he's a beast uh, yeah but, uh, he is. he's awesome uh, let's call let's call it even for now all right coach we're gonna hey we're gonna i'm gonna we're gonna give him a call we're gonna we're gonna put a little competition together, Coach. That's yeah. what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. You be a, you, you be the QB, and we'll we'll go, man. We'll we'll throw it together. <laughs> and so, Rain, I want to ask you real quick. What what was the? And this is a plug slash just a question for you. But what book did you write that was uh, that had so much success? And, and and plug that and say why you wrote it. Well, no, we we wrote Ethan and I. You know, we're still business partners, and he's just a stud. He is. Uh, I mean, he's got eight kids and, 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 uh, you know, we, we started a company together called Prosper and, and we wrote the book called Prosper. We're actually relaunching it out. So I'll, I'll get you it. We hit New York times in a time just like this. We started writing it in 2008 and nine during the last kind of uh, financial crisis that we went through. And it was really a book about the balance between money, happiness, and sustainability. And so it's it's uh, prosper. You can get it on Amazon, but we're we are revising it, and relaunching it out because it's actually, and we started redoing this six months ago. And so, um, but yeah, I wrote a book about kind of six practices that will drive prosperity in your life, and it's a lot more than money. And I think we're feeling that now. I th I don't think I mean crazy what's happening, and my heart goes out to everybody that's you know either dealing with loss, um, dealing with loss of jobs or family loss. I lost, I lost a good friend to COVID uh, just Sunday. And so Jeez. it's, it's for real. Um, and so we wrote a book just about the balance between money, happiness, and sustainability. And we all know a lot of people that have made a lot of money that don't have any friends. We know, I know a lot of people that are happy that don't have any money, but true prosperity is being able to have both and to be able to sustain it over long periods of time. And the only way you can do that is to really do what God created you to do or do what your best core competency is that you enjoy it and you love it. So that was uh, I like that. And we did a lot of research around it, thousands of interviews. And, and uh, so really what kind of brought joy and, and not just joy, but also helped you make a living. Yeah, I really like that, man, because I think people, the dichotomy between money and fin uh, finances versus like happiness, it's always like, well, you can't have one without the other. It's like, some people say it's the opposite where it's like, no, the more money you have, less happy you are. And I think what you just said is almost a voucher for like, you can be incredibly happy with absolutely nothing. You can be incredibly miserable with absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the way to fully prosper is by having both because money opens up so many doors for you. But if you have the, the right mindset going into it, it's, it's just full prosperity of opening doors, having the, the mitigating the stresses of not having money, but then also using that for the good. I, I love the way you put that. It's just, you, you can be happy and have money and you can also have nothing and be happy as well. And so what's fully prospering? That's really cool. Yeah, I would love a book. I'm a big reader. I think I've read 66 books in the last couple of years. Uh, ever since I stopped playing, playing ball, well, to put it, 
I'm not, that wasn't a brag because before that 66 books in the last two, two or two and a half years was, I think my only book was Captain Underpants in like fifth grade. So this is me just playing, <laughs> this is me just playing catch up, man. This is not me bragging. This is me saying I didn't read enough as a kid. So I, I got, I got to catch up now. But uh, yeah, I would love to, love to read that man and, and uh, plug that where I can and, and serve you where I can. Awesome, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate it a ton. Randy, I want a last question for you. Um, what are your three keys to putting yourself in a situation to prosper? And we'll leave it at that. Okay, my, my three keys are this. Um, one of which I call the, uh, the home court advantage. And I really think that if everything's not right at home, it really doesn't matter what you do in business. Mm. And so I have an amazing wife. She's so freaking awesome. I'm writing that and down. I'm not, I'm not paying attention. I'm writing that down. It's the it's the home court advantage, Mitch. If everything's not right at home, nothing's right. And so I have an amazing wife. I've got six kids and I've got two sets of twins. And they're why I do everything and I try not to lose that perspective. Okay. Um, and I think actually a lot of people gravitate to me for that is just my belief that family is still the central unit. And we're seeing that now. Like never before is like, things don't really matter. Like if you're dying, like you want to be with those that you love. If you're like, so we just need to get down to what's the irreducible. And so that's my number one is the home court advantage. I love that. Okay. Number two and three. Number two are um, never forget that people are more important than things. I love that. I love that. That is, that is like so important to remember. You never know who the treasure map to the treasure is. And, you know, you never know. You treat the Uber driver and the CEO the same because you never know if that Uber driver is like the CEO's brother. And it's just, it's karma, man. So people are the most invaluable asset inside your company and outside. And just, dude, it's a time where we got to treat everyone with kindness and love. Like That's for that. number two. Number three is never stop shuffling your feet. Never give up, never quit, never. One of my best friends is Rudy Rudiger. And uh, I watched that my uh, senior year in high school. And that was my nickname in high school. But it's like never, ever, ever, ever stop shuffling your feet. And I actually get kind of fired up when, you know, I see something when I know people are home and they're like, dude, I just ran out of Doritos. Now I got to move to Cheetos. And dude, never, in, never before in the history has the government told us to watch Netflix and stay inside for two weeks. That's actually not, it's not what anybody's saying. And so I am a freaking warrior and I am a beast and I will outwork anyone, but have fun doing it and don't be grumpy, but never, <laughs> ever, ever stop shuffling your feet. Man, I like that. That's really good. That packed a punch, man. I, number three might, might have just gone up to number two on that one, man. That was nice. <laughs> That was that way you brought the house down, man. I love that. That's so, really good. Randy, you're the man. This has been awesome. It's been really fun. I hope we stay connected. I hope this virus ends soon so you and I can go get dinner together and uh, just talk more, man. This has been really fun. Uh, I'll be following your journey uh, for, for, for as long as I can, as long as possible, man. You're an awesome guy. And you've, uh, you've blessed the world today, man. I hope uh, hundreds, I know hundreds and hundreds of people will watch this today. And uh, you're an awesome guy, man. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching your story get better and better. You too, buddy. Hey, I'm I'm here. You uh, let's get together. I'll uh, I'll shoot you out. Shoot me over your address, and I'll uh, shoot you out my next favorite book. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love it, man. You're awesome, man. Thanks hey. so much. Let's let's uh let's I'll shoot you an email. We'll connect soon. And uh, God bless, man. We'll see hey. you, brother. God bless, brother. See you, okay, man. See you, man.